Hey guys, it's Stas for another Beer Co video. Today we're going to look at water chemistry again, but this time look at how we can use Beersmith to help us better understand what's going on in our beer. Let's jump straight into Beersmith and have a look what we've got. So this is more or less the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale recipe that's been floating around uh, the internet for the last number of years. Um, let's have a quick look at the recipe before we go. Uh, we've got 90% uh, pale malt, 10% crystal 60 or 120 EBC, uh, and then we've bittered with magnum. Uh, I've subbed topaz uh, for pearl uh, in the last time I brewed it, and then we've got a cascade uh, at 10 minutes and cascade again at flame out fermented with US05. So this is a pale ale, this is a classic pale ale. Um, the stats uh, for the beer, uh, for the style set here, and you can see the stats here, um, down below. Before we jump into water and how to, how to set it up into Beersmith, let's, let's recap what we've done in the last video where we talked about pH. Now, uh, all the malts that you add into the beer um, they do affect the wort pH or the beer pH. They, they add acid or they add hydrogen ions to the wort, thus lowering the pH. Um, base malts, pale malts uh, do it a little bit. Roasted, dark roasted malts do it a lot more. Um, and so this beer is it will have like some light uh, roasted or the, the crystal malt is it's not very much though so it's not going to pull the ph down enough to get within that 5.2 to 5.6 uh, mash ph so we're going to have to help it along either by adding an acid like lactic acid or phosphoric acid or you could add in uh, acidulated malts as well with that in mind whenever i uh, am thinking about water chemistry i'm sort of thinking about the, the color of the beer and where that might put me in uh, in terms of pH. This is something that you kind of get better at the more you think about. Um, but these tools help take the guesswork out of it. So before we jump over to the water page and we start talking about salts to add, uh, think about uh, you need to know where you're at before you know what to add to get to where your target is. So if, if your target's here, well, you might need to add, to, you might already be here and only need to add a little bit of something to get wherever it is that you want to go, or you might be starting down here and you need to add a lot. So where can you get that information from? You could talk, you could go to the water board and uh, look at their report. It's not very useful. It's, it's good as like a really loose idea of where the water is. But it often doesn't have the detail in terms of, you know, if you're in a big city uh, over a large catchment area, um, you know, you might have several dams and you don't know which area, which dam or water source you're sourcing your water from. Uh, so it's, if you can talk to someone to try and get a little bit more detail out of, that'll be good. And that's what actually what I've been able to do uh, via a member of uh, my homebrew club. So I'm fortunate in that regard. If you can't do that, you can get your water tested by a lab. Um, there's a lot of purpose uh, places that do water testing. It might be expensive. It, it just depends on whereabouts you are and what, what you have access to. You could probably, if you have connections at a university or something, you can probably uh, get some information there. Uh, also, you could buy a water testing kit. Uh, and if, if you've exhausted all those and you still don't know, uh, where you're at. A lot of home brewers have started using distilled water or reverse osmosis water, also known as RO water, um, to, so that they take out all the uh, minerals and ions out of their water and they're just left with pure water and then they build their uh, water profile from there. So anyway, let's talk about um, the water. So if we go over to the water tab, up, up here, uh, we see that there are two sort of columns. We've got what sort of water we have at the top and what is going to be our additions in order to reach where we want to be. So as I said, uh, I've got a reasonable idea 
uh, of where my water sits. This is it, Crowd Bay, guess. Uh, so you can see I've got 23 parts per million calcium, six parts per million magnesium, 27 parts sodium, 34 parts sulfate, 47 parts chloride, and 77 parts bicarbonate. Cool, so I know roughly where I am. Now, what does that mean? Uh, it, so you've got two types of salts. One affects your pH and your, your mouthfeel, might mean from a soft mouthfeel profile all the way to a firm uh, or, or uh, yeah, firm mouthfeel. Uh, and then you've got salts which uh, they don't really affect the, the pH, but they affect the way that the beer tastes and it might accentuate the hoppiness of it or the bitterness uh, and or the, the maltiness uh, or, or the sweetness uh, of the beer. Um, it also should be said that um, adjusting the water chemistry is not really going to be something that's going to fix a bad beer. Uh, it's sort of like, you know, you can't just throw salt at, a, at, a, at food and, and it doesn't taste good and expect it to taste better. Um, you need to, you know, you need to have a good recipe and well executed uh, brewing techniques in order to get a good beer and uh, water additions uh, will make that good beer into a great beer, but it won't fix a bad beer. So anyway, back to this. Uh, so we've got our starting point. How do we know what to aim for? Well, if we go down to the next column, there's a button here uh, that says match a target profile. Now, I'm going to have a look at these uh, targets. You've, we've got two different types of water profiles uh, listed here. Well, three places, beer styles, and sort of ballpark general descriptors. Um, this, if you know Bruin Water, which is a spreadsheet, I believe these sort of descriptors of beers sort of are lifted from, from those. Um, so, if we scroll down, you will see, you know, uh, things like Burton on Trent, and this is the water profile for that. Uh, you can see it's quite a bit different from mine. Uh, you know, Dublin in Ireland. But if you're aiming for like a, a location, uh, you might want to sort of take that with a grain, a grain of salt. A pun not intended, but I'll take it um, because. If a brewery did use that water, they probably treated it. So you need to know what the treatment of the water was, and that would be a starting profile. Uh, so instead, I like to go for the sort of the descriptors. So I'm going to go for a profile here that says Hoppy Pale Ale. And you can see here that the water profile for that is um, 140 parts per million calcium. 18 parts per million magnesium, 25 parts per million sodium, uh, 300 parts per million sulfate, 55 parts per million chloride, and 110 parts per million bicarbonate. So I'm gonna click on that and click OK. Uh, and then when I click uh, OK, you can see that the uh, beer smith has worked out exactly what I need to add and when. So you can see that it also breaks it up into mash and sparge additions. Now, me, I put all my water in HLT at the start and treat it for, for, to get rid of the chlorine. So what I would do is I would just add these sparge and mash additions together and add it and treat all of my water at once. Then I'll put the, um, uh, the strike water in my grandfather mash in and then sparge on top. So I treat it once, it's pretty easy to, to sort of understand that. And um, Beersmith will also tell you down here where you're sitting. Now these ranges are the, the recommended ranges. Uh, if you have too much, um, uh, too many minerals in your beer, it can have like a, a metallic minerally uh, uh, flavor and not be very pleasant so you can see here my sulfate levels uh, are sort of a little bit high 
um, for for this, but it's yellow means it's like eh, it's a little little bit high, but we should be okay. So now that we've done this, if we go back to our design page, you can see that it's already added in uh, the salts for us into our recipe, and they now live within the recipe. So now that we've done that, uh, remember that adding in the, the salts can affect our residual alkalinity, and which means it's the, the beer's um, ability to resist uh, a change in acid. So uh, let's go and have a look at our mash tab. We can see that our predicted mash pH is going to be 5.57. Now that's within spec, just. I wanna try and bring it down to, well, let's say 5.3. So the way that we do that is we put in our measured uh, pH at 5.53, 5357. And then we wanna put our target mash pH at 5.3. Now once we do that, and we tell Beersmith what acid we're going to use to reduce uh, the pH by, it will calculate how much we need. So I'm gonna go by the Reinheitsgebot and add acid malt. So once I've put in acid malt, the acid concentration of 2%, I'm just gonna say, yep, that's fine. Uh, but you might wanna check your particular type of acid malt to get that specification. And you can see that the, the beer smith is telling me that I need to add 240 grams or 0.24 kilos uh, to my grist. Uh, so to do that, I then click on add acid malt, then put in my amount here, 0.23, oh, sorry, 0.24, into the mash, click OK. If I go back to my design tab, you can see that it's added in 0.24 of acid malt into my grist. Go back to my mash page and it's updated my adjusted, my expected or estimated uh, adjusted mash pH range there. So that at least I know what I'm aiming for. And throughout the brew day, I can take measurements and see whereabouts I'm landing in my results. Um, so that's pretty much uh, how we use Beersmith uh, to track and adjust our water chemistry for brewing and also to adjust our pH uh, of the mash as we go and to fully treat your water. If you found this uh, video helpful, please let us know in the, com in the comments down below. If you have any further questions about water chemistry or beer smith or you want us to cover anything else, uh, please let us know in the comments and uh, we'll do our best to uh, get around to answering the questions as they come. So if you're after anything like uh, salts or a pH meter, anything to do with adjusting your water chemistry uh, on brew day, I'll leave a link um, in the description to the Vico store where you can browse the available products and pick up some things to help you make better beer. If you use the coupon code WATER, you'll also save 10% for a one-time purchase. I hope you found this video informative and interesting. This has been Stas from Stas Brewing, brought to you by Beerco. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.